across the galaxy. I am Captain Starlight and you are watching another live stream by Captain Starlight, which is so, so very exciting. And we like to start our live streams by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land from which our viewers are streaming in from today. We have beautiful lands all across Australia, so we'd like to acknowledge these and the elders past, present and emerging. And we'd also like to acknowledge any First Nations people that are watching today. Hi there and welcome oh do we have an amazing live stream for you today now you might be watching from one of many places you might be watching from our fun with captain starlight facebook page or our fun with captain starlight youtube page or maybe you are on planet starlight on the website there and you might be watching along there or maybe you are in a Starlight Express room or in a hospital across Australia. A big hello to everybody watching. Hi, no matter how you are watching today, welcome to the live stream. And we are so very excited to have you here. Now, we have a very special guest on the live stream today. And I'm sure you know who it is. It is the amazing Jane Vaughn. Welcome to the show. Jane Vaughn, how are you today? Hello, I'm feeling very excited and really, really, I think this is going to be an amazing half hour. I can't wait to show with you my new book, which is called Storm. Um, I've got some really exciting stuff in there to show you soon. Oh, that is very exciting. Oh, I love a storybook. So maybe we can read that later on as well. And do you know what? Sounds good. We are going to open up the floor to everyone who is viewing it today to ask some questions. Now, the best place to ask questions is if you are watching on Facebook or our Planet Starlight site. You can type your questions into the chat. Or if you are near a Captain Starlight as well, tell them your questions and they can get them to us as quick as they can so you can ask your questions away live on the show. Now, um, I would love to start us off with a great big question. Um, my question to you is, what is the weather like there where you are today? Oh, where I am today, yeah. it's a little bit cold. We had all this warm and sunny weather and it was here for days and days and days and everyone got really, really excited that it was uh, summer is here and it's amazing. And then a big cold front hit and it turned rainy and cold and gusty winds. And there's actually a lot of areas in southeastern Australia that are a little bit flooded at the moment. So if you're in a in a flooded area, hello to you there. I hope everything is going okay for you. Or if you're on, on a different planet, maybe you've got big waves that are crashing over and you've got thunder happening and you've got all sorts of exciting stuff. Well, I'm on a different planet and there is always some crazy weather here today, <laughs> well, every day. But do you know what? I have another question, <gasps> but I'm going to ask that in a minute because Rose has asked a question. Okay, Rose has said, how did you know you wanted to become a meteorologist? Oh, that's a great question, Rose. As I was growing up, I would find that you know, at Christmas time and there are the movies on TV and you've got generally all these American families that are sitting around an open fire and it's snowing outside and, and then you're here in Australia and you're finding that it's warm outside and you've got the air conditioning on and, and you want to go for a swim or you want to go to the beach. And so I was a little bit confused as to why they were getting that one thing and we were getting this other thing here. And so then eventually I went skiing for the first time down the slopes and I saw snow. I thought this is the best thing in the world and I wanted to know everything about it. Oh, that's an amazing answer. That's so cool. I've never <laughs> considered being a meteorologist, but now I might just to, you know, learn about all the different types of weather there are because <laughs> – Planet Earth has a lot of different types of weather, which is pretty We cool. do have lots of different types of weather. And it's amazing how um, you can go from being hot and sunny and then all of a sudden it is freezing cold and windy and you've got thunder and lightning and even hailstones. It's amazing how our weather changes so much depending on where you live. So you could be up in Queensland and you're having tropical weather and it feels all steamy and warm and humid. And then you could be maybe in Alice Springs in the middle and you're sitting in the desert and it's hot hot and it's dry or you could be in Perth for example where it's warm and sunny and then you get this sea breeze that comes in in the afternoon and cools everything down and makes it nice and pleasant or you could be in Melbourne where we have four seasons in one day if not just one 
power. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. I hear there's a lot of different seasons going on in Melbourne, which is pretty funny. Oh, Jim's has a question for us. Um, it's probably for you, because I've never studied the weather. And they've said, <laughs> is studying the weather hard? Is it a difficult thing to do? Oh, looks like mm -hmm. the weather has frozen. Let's see. <laughs> I went and as part of that, I got to do atmospheric science, which is the study of the weather, but I also did mathematics and I got to do physics and chemistry and all sorts of things like that. So it's a scientific study to work out what is most likely going to happen. So essentially you're taking a snapshot of what's happening on the globe right now. So all the observations from our satellites, which show the, uh, the cloud, we've got our radars, which show the rain and all those weather stations out there too. That goes into a huge supercomputer and we use a mathematical equation to work out what's likely to happen at the other end. It takes like six hours to process all of those numbers and then it brings out, it spits out the answer at the other end saying whether it'll be hot or cold or wet or dry and how that's going to unfold. Oh, that's so cool. Hey, because you get to learn about the weather and say the weather, I was thinking maybe, um, I don't know if you know this, but I also studied. Um, I studied at Bull University and um, I oh. didn't learn about the weather, but I learned about the perfect conditions for blowing bubbles, um, which is kind of like the weather. <laughs> so I was wondering if you could what help us out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but maybe you could help us out by creating our own weather report. That's something I that I do that. Okay, great. So what we need to do is I've got some questions to ask you and we're also going to ask every single person joining in from the chats. Um, and you can respond if you are if you are watching today, you can respond by sending in an emoji or hitting an emoji button if you've got a button there of either a star or a heart. Now the first question is are you more or a, of a cat or a dog person. I don't know what this has to do with the weather yet, but it will be very important and it will be revealed. But what's your answer? Are you a cat or a dog person? Am I allowed to share yet? Yes, you let okay. us know. Let us I know what your answer is. And you'll see why soon. I am definitely more of a dog person. A dog person. Do you know what? Me too. Me oh. too. They're very friendly. They're they're very cute. I love a dog. All right, we're already up to the next question. It is, Ooh. which witch is the most wicked? Okay, there's two witches there. There's and now there's a musical wicked, and it kind of makes the wicked witch seem a bit less wicked. But which wicked witch do you see think is the most wicked? The star or the heart? Jane, what's your opinion? What are you picking at home? I think I'm going to go with the wicked witch of the West. When I was growing up, I watched that movie a lot and she seemed very <laughs> wicked to me. So, yeah, I'm going with I it. I mean, it's, it's in the name. It is the Wicked Witch. So <laughs> I have to agree with you there. And if you are watching <laughs> along at home or in a hospital, where you are voting as well. Um, next question. Which of these animals is the coolest? <gasps> That's going to be a hard choice. We've got a star emoji Ooh. for the rabbit, a heart for the elephant or a rocket ship for the unicorn, which do you think is the coolest? Hmm. Hmm. I think I might go with elephant. Oh, really? Yeah, That's elephant. so cool. This is the yeah. first time that my vote is going to be different to yours. Yeah. Um, I actually have a pet unicorn. So I'm going to vote for the unicorn, <laughs> which is the rocket ship vote. Oh. All right, I'm pretty sure we have one last question. Which milkshake flavour is the best? Now, on Planet Starlight, we love tuna milkshakes. Um, but I know Ew. that um, oh, on Earth they have a different palette to us. I'm pretty sure you like chocolate and strawberry milkshake. Which is your favourite? It's not tuna. <laughs> That's fair enough. That's fair enough. I'm going to go with chocolate. Yeah. <gasps> Oh, yes. Yes. Do you know what? Chocolate's my second favourite flavour of milkshake, so I respect that choice. That's very delicious. <laughs> well, Yum. that's all the questions. And we've, we're going to put them all together and we are going to create those answers into a weather report to do later on. But I was thinking right now, you do you have your book with you today? I do. 
It is right here. <laughs> Could we read the book with you? Oh, that would be a lovely idea. Yes. All right, I'm going to sit back and relax and have a listen to this amazing story. All right, let's get started. Hello, everyone. I'm really, really pleased to read this story to you today. It's it's from my heart. It's about little Jane and also my dog, Stampy. So you'll see why I chose uh, dog as my favourite one there. So let's get into it and we'll start. Here we go. Storm by Jane Bunn and the illustrations by Dasha Riley are gorgeous. Jane flew a kite. The kite flew high and wild, but then she noticed the clouds. The sky was menacing and dark it looked like it could swallow anything and everything. Jane hurried indoors. Dangerous weather is on the way, said the lady on TV. Stay indoors, stay safe. That evening, Jane watched the wind shake the trees. Lightning filled the sky. Thunder stole her heart. The storm will pass, Stampy, Jane whispered to her puppy. But Stampy was shaking as hard as the trees up on the hill. Hail hammered the roof and Stampy disappeared under Jane's bed. Jane wished she could help Stampy feel brave. The next morning, there was no wind and no rain, but there was a mess. Leaves everywhere, branches down. Jane's neighbour, Mrs. Alam, had lost her rose garden. Mr. Lee's washing line was in the lake. Oh! And Stampy, she was still hiding. More storms tonight, stay indoors and stay safe, said the lady on TV. Uh-oh, Stampy wouldn't be liking this. Jane knew what it was like to feel scared. So she pulled out her notebook and began her very first weather journal. Jane needed to know everything about thunderstorms so she could help Stampy. What causes storms? Jane asked her dad after breakfast. Let's go to the library and find out, said dad. Jane combed the books for answers and wrote down everything she learned. Storms. Storms form when warm air moves upwards to make a storm cloud. Storm clouds can grow as tall as 16 kilometres up in the air. That is a huge number. It's like 10,000 acrobats standing all on top of each other. Inside the cloud, air swooshes around like a freeway of fast cars. It zooms up one side and then down the other. This movement is called updrafts and downdrafts. Downdrafts bring strong wind, rain and hail. When the storm runs out of updrafts, it fizzles away. What makes lightning, Jane asked her mum after morning tea. I'm not sure, mum replied. Why don't you ask Aunt Kate? She's a meteorologist. Jane rang Aunt Kate. Lightning is a bit like when you get a zap from static electricity, began Aunt Kate. Jane wrote down everything she said. Lightning. Inside a storm cloud, balls of ice rush up and down on the winds. If they crash together, they form an electrical charge, which escapes down to the ground in an electrical current. We see that as a big flash of lightning. After lunch, Jane helped Mr. Mrs. Alam pick up roses and leaves. Where does all this wind come from, wondered Mrs. Alam. I can show you, said Jane, pulling out her weather journal. Wind. Air bubbles don't like being squashed together, so they'll rush towards an empty space. When they do, we feel it as the wind. A storm creates big differences in the air. This makes the air bubbles move very fast and race to get to that empty space first. That brings a big rush of wind from the clouds down to the ground. Jane's family were having afternoon tea when Mr. Lee came rushing in with a picture of a giant hailstone. I wonder how the hailstone got so big, asked Mr. Lee. So Jane showed Mr. Lee her weather journal. Hail. In the updraft of the storm, water droplets push upwards into a colder spot and they freeze into hailstones, just like a giant ice cream machine. 
When hailstones get too heavy, they move down the downdraft, sometimes crashing into other water droplets and other hailstones. They all freeze together to make bigger and bigger hailstones. Eventually, they fall out the bottom of the cloud and they rush to the ground as hail. By dinner, Jay knew all about storms, lightning, thunder, wind and hail. But was it enough to help Stampy? Once again, the clouds darkened and the wind strengthened. Jane gathered every last fact she could find. Anyone see where Stampy is there, hiding under the bed? <laughs> There's Stampy. <laughs> oh, Stampy. <laughs> I like how Jane has her legs up the wall too. <laughs> Yeah, and maybe that's a you can see planet on the computer there. <gasps> I can see planet Earth. Yeah. <laughs> okay, facts about storms. There are 1,800 storms every day on Earth. Wow, that's a lot. The stormiest place in the world is Catatumbo in Venezuela. There are storms 160 nights of the year. And they last up to 10 hours each time. Can you imagine trying to sleep through that? <laughs> 160 nights of the year. That's like half of them. You'd be so tired. <laughs> now, there are on average 100 bolts of lightning every second on Earth. <sighs> Heaps of them. Oh, A lightning my. strike. <laughs> A lightning strike heats the air to 27,000 degrees. That's a 1,000 times hotter than an average summer's day. Lightning can make your hair stand up straight. You see lightning before you hear thunder because light travels faster than sound. So here's a tip for you. Next time, when you see a flash of lightning, count until you hear the thunder, count how many seconds, and then divide that number by three. So you've got to do a little bit of maths in there. We can do it. So now you know how many kilometres away the thunderstorm is. So say you have that big flash of lightning and then a rumble of thunder, but in between you count one cat and dog, two cat and dog, three cat and dog, four cat and dog, five cat and dog, six cat and dog, boom, and there goes the thunder. So that was six seconds. You divide that by three, that means the storm is two kilometres away. Glad I got some maths in here. <laughs> <laughs> Jane read Stampy everything. She showed her pictures too. But as the wind rattled the window, Stampy just crept further and further under the bed. Poor Stampy. The sky rumbled and Stampy whined. Jane needed something else. She began to write a storm safety plan for Stampy. Stampy's storm safety plan. Number one, stay indoors. It's the safest place you can be. Number two, stay away from windows and doors. Number three, if you do get stuck outdoors, don't be the tallest object. If you happen to be a giraffe, crouch down into a tight ball. Number four, please don't use an umbrella. You'll attract lightning. And number five, also don't go near metal, not the tin man, no way, or the garden shed. Wind shook the trees. Lightning filled the sky. Thunder stole Jane's heart. But this time, Jane and Stampy had a plan to follow. Stampy helped Jane count the seconds between lightning and thunder. The storm is four kilometres away, Stampy. And Jane sung lullabies to help Stampy feel calm until it was all over. See, Stampy, we followed Stampy's storm safety plan and we are okay, said Jane. The next day, the sun shone. Jane and Stampy got busy helping Mum, Dad, Mrs. Alam and Mr. Lee tidy up the mess left by the storm. When Jane was done, Jane wrote more notes in her weather journal. Look at them all tidying everything up there. They got the chainsaw out, sorting out the tree. Everyone's helping, all coming together. Isn't that nice? Predicting the weather. 
thousands of times every day, weather instruments collect data on what the weather is doing. Satellites take photos of clouds from space, just like a camera. Radars take scans of where the rain is falling. Weather stations record how warm or cold it is, how strong the wind blows, and how much rain is falling. Weather balloons are sent up into the sky to take measurements too. From all of these things, we can piece together the information to describe what the Earth's weather is doing now. All that information is fed into a supercomputer. These huge machines analyse all the numbers and predict what the weather will do next. Meteorologists, just like me, study this information to see when it'll be warm, when it'll be sunny, and when to warn everyone that a thunderstorm could develop. That's my book. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, I loved that book. That was so good. And you know what? Sometimes I do get a little bit scared and worried in big storms and big weather. So it's really cool to know that there's facts behind it that make it a little bit less scary. It is indeed. Isn't it nice to know that when you've got a flash of lightning, you know that that is really, really hot and you should stay away from it. But also when you hear that rumble of thunder, you can count how far away that storm is and know it's not right on top of you. and that. You're yeah, I think I'm going to try that. I really like That's it. Good. Now, yeah. and I didn't is, check. Oh, yeah. oh, I didn't check. Are there any giraffes out there? Because if you are, um, you'll need to crouch into a tight wall because you don't want to be the tallest. Well, they're not <laughs> native to planet Starlight, uh, but there might be some on planet, uh, some on planet Earth. <laughs> so giraffes, <laughs> yeah, might look be. out. But we do have some very giraffes tall animals here. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Bill said that was oh. a great book. That's very nice of you, Bill. Thank you. You know what? We will open it up to a couple more questions too. Jake and Noah would like to know what the difference between a hurricane and a cyclone is. Oh, that's a really, really good question. Because if you're in America, they're calling them hurricanes. And if you're here in Australia, we're calling them cyclones, also known as tropical cyclones. And if you're in Southeast Asia, they'll call it a typhoon. Now, they are all exactly the same thing, exactly the same beast. It is a rotating, very large weather system that has an eye in the centre of it and creates big waves, big rain and big winds. But they're all the same thing. They just have a different name in different parts of the world. What do you call oh them on your planet? Um, well, I call them swirly whirlies, uh, which is pretty <laughs> cool. Um, but I've not seen one in real life, which I think is a good thing. Yes, I think that's I have seen them too. in the movies. Yeah. We've got another question. <laughs> what is Jane's favourite video game of all time? Oh, I think I might go old school here. I like the old ones and it's Pac-Man. <laughs> <gasps> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Pac-Man, well, all of us captains, most of us anyway, are pretty big fans. Yeah. <laughs> <gasps> Do you hear that music, though? I think it might be time for our very own weather report. Now, you have helped us out choosing some responses. We did ask you and all of our viewers to send in their responses to some very random questions. Now, I have some very amazing answers um, that are going to go into our very own weather report. Now, this is a weather report for Starlight. So here we go. <laughs> oh, we got to start it officially. Hello to all the captains across the bright yellow lands. It is my honor to bring you the weather. Okay. Yeah. Might take a look up north to the Marshmallow Mountains, and you'll see a high chance that it will be raining dogs. Mm. Ah. <laughs> With a high chance of, oh no and a low of brrrr. <laughs> this will be the perfect day for pet strength umbrellas and maximum fluffy cuddles. <laughs> now, moving on. Down to Starlight Central, you can expect a strong gust of west, as wicked witch of the west, winds. Take advantage of those winds and program your space jetpacks for best travel. 
Ooh, to the west. To you, of course. You know what west is. Oh, of central starlight. It is. Going to Earth correspondent James Bond. Oh, you are west of planet starlight. There you go. <gasps> Where's your hat? Jacket's on. Okay. Oh, we're so close. Okay. Ooh. But not that far, but... Unicorn, which is of course right next to Candy Cane Forest. Excellent work residence there can be. And expected temperatures as low as, well, put your jackets on because they're going to get as low as your hat. Well, this is the spot you can get out those picnic blankets and look up to the sky as clouds the shapes of unicorns go flying Yay. by. That's right, Candy Cane Forest has unicorn shaped clouds today. Oh, we love unicorn shaped clouds, but there is more. Now if we move further south beyond Baked Bean Beach and out to the Milkshake Sea, oh well, very exciting. We can expect high tides of chalk shake. Pack your swimmers, but be warned from extreme levels of deliciousness. And don't forget to swim between the flags. Well, that's all here from Planet Starlight. Now I'll cross live to the Earth correspondent, Jane Bunn. Jane, are you there? Jane. Hello, that was amazing. <laughs> Jane, do you think you could tell us what the weather is like there on Earth? Is it anything like the weather here on Planet Starlight today? Oh, well, I'm about to go on to the news to share what the <gasps> weather is with all the people at home. And I'm wondering whether I should talk about it raining or moving with chocolate milkshakes. <laughs> <laughs> for tonight but if yes. we get some very heavy rain I might say it's raining like cats and dogs so we'll have both <laughs> oh yes that is a great way to explain it raining like cats and dogs I love it <laughs> well, do you know what that is almost time oh. I know because oh. we've read an amazing story with you we read Storm which is your great book now is that for sale? Can we, is, is Storm, is Storm for sale? It is for sale. You can find it anywhere that good books are sold. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> oh, that is, that is a very cool thing to be able to say. Your book is for sale where good books are sold. I love it. <laughs> you know what? I might even go find myself a copy because that, that is a really, really, really special, special story indeed. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. It has been so much fun having you here with us, joining us on a live Planet Starlight. Um, you're welcome to take any tips from my weather report to you on okay. your weather report this evening. I was making some notes. <laughs> <laughs> good, good to know, I good to know. Can I, can I have a captain's name? I think I might, <gasps> if I can choose my own. Yes. I might go with Captain Lightning. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow. That is such a cool captain name. And you could have a superpower and you could be lightning fast. Oh, yes. That's me. <laughs> that is a really, really cool captain name. And I've never met a captain lightning on Planet Starlight before. So we could give you the name. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it has been an absolute pleasure. A pleasure indeed. Um, You've been Jane. You've been awesome. <laughs> and I'm Captain Starlight. And thanks so much, everyone, for joining us today. Now, we have another live stream happening on the 20th, and that is going to be with, oh, I've forgotten who it is. It's Turbo Tommy. <laughs> That's going to be with Turbo Tommy. So there are live streams that happen all the time here on Planet Starlight. So look out for the next one because they're a lot of fun. But thanks so much for hanging out. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for listening. Bye, Jane. Bye. Bye.